Hello and welcome to Heather and Hops. My name is Kat, or Catherine, and I'm an Ita based in Hertfordshire in the United Kingdom. This is my little space on the internet where I have documented my knitting and now spinning journey from project one through to now where we've cultivated a knitting community and friendship, real friendship. I am actually seeing a fibre print today, which makes me so, so happy. Um, but yeah, how are you? I genuinely expected a response then. How are you? I hope you're well. I hope that you've got some cozy knitting, maybe spinning, a, a project of sorts. Maybe, maybe I'm just on as company in the background. Either way, it's lovely to be with you. I hope that whatever you are doing is bringing you a bit of joy, even if it's just a tiny bit. I know some people like to sit and listen while they're working and things, so, you know, I don't know. Anyway, I am sipping on a chai today. It's that time of year where I, I mean, all year I'm the person that makes mince pies in June and will feel no sense of guilt or weirdness about it. I love them. I love the flavours of autumn and winter, but chai is definitely an all year round thing for me, but I definitely boost up those flavours when the weather starts to do a bit of changing which it is, and, and yeah. So I hope you have a cup of something, be it tea, coffee, water, whatever your beverage of choice is. Um, yes. Uh, I'm wearing for once my Sildotna. I was going to part with this one, and I don't know why something keeps making me keep it. I think it's the yarn. I love the yarn so much that I'm, I'm unable to part with it. So if you don't know, this is the Soldotna by Caitlin Hunter or Boyland Knitworks. It's a jumper or a t-shirt. It's very cropped. Um, this is the favourite one that I knitted. I have knitted three and I've never been truly happy with it. I don't understand for me having a big colour work jumper. I might be wrong I might not have had enough time outdoors where I can maybe wear this with a cardigan and I am knitting the perfect cardigan to go with this. Um, but today's quite the perfect weather for it. So the thought did go through my head today where I might rip it back and just reuse the yarn for something else. But I might give myself until kind of March next year to, you know, try it with this new cardigan and see. But it, I love the yarn and weirdly the colours are growing on me. I really liked the grey and I just wasn't sure about this bright green but it's more and more my thing so go figure. And this is just an improvised beanie that I did. It's one of my favourite hats. I wear it way too often so you're probably bored of me talking about it but this is Black Heather uh, Let Love Be by Istex Istex, which is Icelandic yarn, and yeah. Whoa, I'm gonna try and slow down. I have, our, our housemate was in this morning, which she never normally is, past sort of seven or eight. Um, so it's just felt really, I've been a bit all over the place. Um, I'm recording on a Tuesday, which is the second time I've done this, I think, but it was just another week where I, yesterday I didn't feel too well if I'm honest and I just did not have energy to do basically anything. Um, I got a few bits done. Oh hey Audrey! If you're new here, Audrey is the in-house mascot slash real star of this uh, space. You're gonna come say hi? She probably won't, you know, she never says hi for long but here she is. Are you sweetheart? There you go. So, yes, I was, anyway, I feel a bit better today, um, a little bit off, but just the same old thing of my body trying to heal from something we're not quite sure what it is. Anyway, let's talk finished objects. There is only the one? Yep, there is only the one, and if you've been here, you'll have seen these a few times, unfinished. Um, but these are the Interchangeable Mitten Liners by Emily Foden. 
and they are in the Knits About Winter book which I talk about loads and I think I was even talking about it Sunday night with our, our lovely DM. Um, and yeah, these are really practical. I am yet to try them on with my mittens or fingerless gloves, which I'm thinking is a good idea for layering too. Um, but I will feed back that information when it's warm enough to wear them. But these are knitted using Forage and Sew Dye Works yarn. It's the uh, Romney Marine, Merino 3 ply. Um, non superwash, which of course makes my heart sing, and naturally dyed using indigo. I really enjoyed using this yarn. It feels absolutely lovely. I'm very grateful that I got the opportunity to try it and talk about it. It was a lovely gift. Um, you know, very, very kind. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to wear these. These are going to go with my spring intentions, sure and my little hat that's just over there. Um, I'll try and put a picture on the screen of the spring intentions too. It's kind of like a, not very on brand for me, but still very much my colors, which I don't know. I like all colors, let's put it that way, but there are definitely colors that I gravitate to and wear more than others. And this is broadsword Yivering Bell by Whistlebear and again in an improvised hat. So yeah, can't really report on how they wear. I have given them a little wash. I've not blocked them fully. These are not blockers. It just makes it a lot easier to show. Um, but bits of cardboard that I covered many moons ago when I had three pairs of mittens to block because when I started knitting, I very quickly uh, was asked to knit some mittens and it wasn't just one pair, it was three pairs, which was really fun, but I wanted them to dry nicely and I wanted to block them out a little bit because they were my first colour work project. So yeah, very happy with these. Can't obviously comment on the wear, can't comment on... I, they fit me lovely, I will say that, they fit me perfectly. I did, um, I measured more than relied on Emily's instructions because she gives the instruction of knit to this amount before your she gives you instructions i'm not going to explain it properly because my words are very weird today but so she says to knit you know say two inches away from how long you want it from the tip of your toe your toe these are fingers <laughs> or the tip of your thumb so i went on that and did it that way as opposed to knitting to the lengths recommended because you can't tell and that's always something that's very interesting I'm and I, I, I think I've said it before but I'm pretty short like I'm small but I'm short as well I'm just a bit below average I think I'm five foot four just about I think I can say I'm five foot four maybe I'm five foot three um, but my hands are really big like and long not necessarily like so this was perfect. I could adjust them very easily, no colour work, no thinking about row gauge. And yeah. So I was thinking about knitting another project from the Knits About Winter, and I have done for ages, and it's the frost. And I keep umming and ahhing. Um, it's beautiful, it's mohair, which I love. I just could never decide if I would do the long version and have it as a piece for wearing with leggings and calling it a day or do it shorter so that it can be basically worn with most of my wardrobe and it would also mean investing in either another skein of a yarn I already have of mohair which is shrinking I will say that or uh, just doing a scrappy one which I'm not sure will look quite as nice as Emily's beautiful version Anyway, this is the Forage and Sew Dye Works yarn. And I think what I will do is talk about the next project that I'm doing using her lovely yarn. Um, because it's here, this is a Manu Boutique bag which is covered in my hair because I'm molting. I'm basically part cat, part husky, tiny part human. And I am using 
think this is marigold dyed. Yeah. So this is another Forage and Sew Dye Works yarn. This is the other skein that I was sent. And again, it is, I believe, the three ply. You can pull out the ball band. because so I'm getting better at keeping them together. Yeah. Romney Merino again, dyed with marigold. Um, and I was thinking that I could do a project with both of them together. And I might do. I might actually do something with them in the future because I'm sure I'll have some left. And then I found this from a D-stash that I purchased a while ago. I can't remember, it didn't come with a band. And I'm just knitting another improvised hat. Uh, it's kind of rose goldy. There you go, um, the way it's come out. I'm really, I don't know. I knew this was never gonna be for me, I mean. I don't know that this is, yeah, this was never going to be for me. I think it's it's a gift for one of two people. One person who is like my best friend that I've just kind of lost touch with a little bit, um, which is sad, but these things happen and she's, without giving anything, I'm sure it's fine. Um, she's just in a very transitional time in her life. She's kind of had big changes and is resettling and that can be a lot, so... I'm give I'm doing the thing where I'm giving a bit of space and will hassle when when I feel like she's ready and I'm ready. Um and on here is I don't know how Nicole does it. I think it's because they're natural colours to be honest, but another stitch marker from Nicole who is Time Weaver and it just goes beautifully. Uh, this is a coral one. Yeah, it's, or it's gonna be for um someone that's getting married. Uh, in the next few years and kept talking about having knitted goods. I can't decide yet. I feel like this kind of belongs to the best friend girl, lady. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not talking like this. Um, because it goes with the hair colours she had all through university and now and it's just very, very her. So can't come on on the pattern because it's from my, my brain. But I am enjoying combining these two. I did think initially it was a shame to kind of use this yarn in this way, putting mohair with it, but the fabric it's making is so sumptuous. It's just lovely and it feels, it feels luxurious, really luxurious. That's something that I will say. Again, it's a tiny bit slubby, but I'm really into that. So yeah. I say really into that. I don't dream of everything being slubby. I don't, not at all, but I really, really like slubs. They make me think about my knitting in a slightly different way. And I'm here for that. Right, let's clear this away. I am sat on the corner of the sofa again. I don't know why I've opted to sit here. I think it's because I was tucked out of the way for my housemate coming in and out, but I quite like it just sat here. So Alex has said that he might help me set up kind of an area in the house where I can just be set up so we don't have to fuss and hopefully that will mean that in the evenings or in the weekend when we can be a bit more spontaneous about recording we might be able to because there's things like, I'll show you, I'll show you the one that he mostly did. We've got things like this that we've done together and there's a few other projects that Alex has got that I'd love to share but I kind of don't want to do it. I feel like it should be us, not just me, because they were us projects. And hopefully we can do a bit more tea chat too. Um, let's go for this one. This is a shawl that I've made up that is using hand spun yarn. These, this is Peyton Daughter, lovely Lorraine or Peyton and Water, and this was by the lovely Bee, and oh, knitting with hand spun is one thing, knitting with hand spun that's been spun by someone else is, it's so special, you can, it's just so special, it's, yeah, my heart, 
So anyway, we'll show you this before I start welling up because that's the sort of person I am, which Mary and Monica now can now attest to because we recently met and I did a lot of crying. Um, but here she is so far. It is a triangle shawl, very, very simple, but it has this like lateral braid, which I'm really happy with. Um, sort of a cable and a little bit of contrast colour and more time weaver stitch markers on the bottom there they were meant to be for Alex but they are for us both <laughs> and yeah I am still yet to decide what we do with the rest I'm at a, at a point now where I'm thinking I might add in another cable just a smaller one and then finish it with a green or do a smaller cable, do a bit more brown and then finish it. I, I can't decide but I am really enjoying knitting on it. It's very, it's simple, like the just knitting garter is lovely if I'm honest. On decent sized needles and it's not on really fine needle, it's just super relaxing and because of how soft this, I can't believe she's got Hebridean yarn so soft. I've never knitted with Hebridean yarn so I can't comment but I do from what I've read it's usually quite a hardy hardy one that's often used for sort of carpets and things but this is carded four times and absolutely so, oh. yeah um so yeah I am really enjoying this if you have any thoughts on how the shawl should look I'd be more than happy to hear. You know, I think if I wasn't knitting it for me and I was knitting it for someone else, I would probably finish it with some sort of feather and fan pattern, but I just, I think simple here is key. Yeah, very much enjoying it and just a little bit more progress, that's kind of all that I can share with you really. Ooh. This lovely bag I share all the time but this was from Maggie of Sonder Knitting and Reading Podcast, I was going to say Spinning Podcast, um, but Maggie we still need to organise our Rhinebeck hangout, let's do that please. <laughs> um, but I am knitting the Tulk cardigan by Albiona. I'll open it to the right page. So. I have the printed copy for a change. I knew that I would want to tally things off with this pattern so I printed it out. I don't do that very often anymore and then the ultimate lazy cardigan. I'm gonna pop that there. I am using Tutulobi, another this text is unspun yarn, so it will if you tug on it it will just kind of fall apart. It's roving. It's I really like this. For many this might uh, this might be a bit scratchy. I don't find that. I wear it next to skin, I wear it on my head with no no issues at all. I imagine, I've never done it, but I imagine if you use something with silk, be it mohair or like a, a silk merino blend, you it, it would blend together and give you that nice fabric but a bit more wearable. I don't know, but I imagine so. And last time I had only done half of the collar and now I'm quite a bit further in, further than I thought I would be. I'm not spending too much of my knitting time on this. It's just, I know this is going to be a staple for my wardrobe and really practical, but because it's the first time using this, I really want to embrace it. I want to use, use it, use the yarn carefully, like, and get as much enjoyment from it as I can because I am really enjoying it. It's it's stronger than Neutrogen, or it, it's stickier 
I should say. I think because it's Icelandic wool and the fibres are a little bit more rustic than most that they use with neutered in, it, it, it's stronger, therefore takes even less thought, so it's quite nice to slow down and have thought with it, if that makes sense. Um, so I've done most of the, I've done all of the short row shaping that it needs. I've done, I think I've only got nine or ten rows until I have completed the shaping and then I'm just knitting straight for the yoke, uh, straight down until the yoke's at the depth it needs to be. But I'm really, I'm enjoying it. It's a very lovely written pattern. I like the way Alviona knit, uh, writes her patterns. Um, the shaping on it's interesting. I, I can't talk for how it's gonna fit just yet. It, I can't really try this on, and I've got it on such a short cable because I'm. I just enjoy a shorter cable than it needs. Um, <laughs> there you go. I do. Uh, more of Nicole's stitch markers. <laughs> um, like I often say, it they're my favourite to use. Um, they always bring me a little bit of a smile. But yeah, I am enjoying this project a lot. It's not going to be one I rush off my needles, but I know that as soon as it's off, it's going to be a staple. I did mention that I hadn't, didn't have buttons, but I found these charity shop ones from my button pantry. It says £1.25, but I, I believe that they were only 40p too. Um, I'm not sure which I'll use. I'll probably use the darker ones. I think there'll be more. But I do think these might be, because they're kind of see-through, they might go darker and look a bit nice on here. So I have buttons. That's exciting. I know that I can use 9 or 10 safely. And yeah. I'm looking forward to continuing this. I have no issue with purling, so knitting it backwards and forwards is bringing me joy too. Um, it's quite nice because a lot of what I'm doing is feels simple and just knitting at the moment, so having some purling is kind of really nice. So yeah, enjoying it, well written. I am happy with the gauge that I got with the recommended needles. I did do a little swatch. Um, but I ripped it back without blocking because I'm a naughty little tinker but I've knitted with this enough to know that for me it doesn't seem to I say that, it's unspun maybe I should have washed it am I going to have deep regret? hmm <laughs> okay here's what it is now I might might go in and knit another swatch and give it a wash I wouldn't be upset if I had to do it again, but I'm not sure that ripping that out is going to be the easiest thing in the world. Anyway, and actually I have... Gonna pause. <laughs> I have two other projects that are... That I'm convinced will be fine. I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. But I'm questioning it slightly. But I do have one that I am questioning. And it is living in this big Duckpool Lane bag, which was my first ever project bag. So I did actually cast on the Yell Cardigan by Marie Wallen. And I've swatched. I'll put in a picture of my swatch. Um, I have adjusted the colours slightly since I've swatched. My main colour is this one. And what I'll do is I'll explain first. I know that this will probably be quite big for me. I was considering going down another needle size, but I don't. I hope you can't hear that. That's what it sounds like around here a lot, by the way. A lot, a lot. Um, I don't want to go down any further, I don't want the fabric to be any more dense than it already is. And not that you'll really be able to see, but... Um, 
Um, I've started the girl cardigan. It's a steeped project. These are my steeped stitches. <laughs> and it's on this small cable again, but I don't, it doesn't need to be any bigger for me to work on. I can stretch out the stitches enough on my five inch needles. I'm gonna shut the door just in case you can hear. Yes, I am using five inch metal needles on this one. I am using different needles depending on projects. In case you hadn't noticed, I've got wooden ones for my hand spun. It felt nicest to me. I've got short four inch ones for this cardigan and four inch metal ones again, nice and slick for this one. So I, I do change my needles depending on what I'm wanting. I wanted this five inch so that I've got more room to kind of block as I go. And whilst this has been really fun, I've got to say I really enjoy having nice long rounds um, I'm not sure now, I I don't know what colour's off, or if I'm just second guessing myself because I know that this is going to be a really long term project, and I swatched twice for this, three times. Um, okay, is that one of each? Okay, so these are yeah, uh, the kind of wheelhouse that I'm thinking. And I think they are, like this would go with most of my dresses in that they are most, the non-floral dresses, this will go with all of them, sort of the denim, the linen. And the same with my linen trousers and my jeans. However, I'm just not sure. I don't know why. This is my main colour. And I've got one here in the skein. This would be my contrast for the top of the body. And I think that I think they're good. I'm just and I think that's perfect. Like, these will go with everything. These are colours that I, I already wear all the time. In fact, I've got my slippers, my elf slippers that were made in the ash grey. I've got a jumper that I recently knitted in the dark grey and I wear them a lot. I don't know, like these, like this one seems more me than this one. These I really like, I like it sort of dirty-ish pastel colour. I don't know why, I think they just, when I wear them with dark colours, I think that's just, suits me, I don't know. And these, I don't know, there's just something holding me back. Alex reckoned that maybe I needed to take out some of them and make it more of an autumnal thing. But when I look back, I, I was actually wearing my autumn culottes yesterday, but I don't often, I don't always wear autumnal colours, even though I love them. So I'm not sure. I think maybe I will, I, what I did was on Sunday when I had this chat with Alex, I, I put this aside and said that I would just wait. And what I might do is knit a few more rounds and see if I can get like a a better feel. I know I, I swatched, so I know what it will, I can get in my head what it's gonna look like, but I don't know. Seeing one strip of the colour works very different to seeing, I don't know, 20 odd repeats of colour work, if you know what I mean. So I think that's kind of on hiatus and it will be a very long term project so I expect and anticipate it being with me for a long long time so I'm not in a rush I'm not in a rush for any knitting um, I would like to get the hat done because it's just having one less thing on the needles um, 
but I'm enjoying knitting it and it's nice to have one project I guess two because at the moment the shawl can be but always having one project that I can just put in my bag and knit when I'm with people you know it's a bit you just always have one of those projects All right um sorry my I don't know what's going on but my fringe this morning is like a bit wild and I keep noticing myself flicking it I tried to tuck it under my hat so that it didn't but and I want to talk about a perspective project because maybe it will help me and maybe it it will make you think too or inspire you to think about your projects when you're thinking about casting on so I have these yarns and so this is drop snored that was a lovely gift from a dear friend and I really hope that she heals up so she can get get back to knitting this one is Mondim this is Rich's Aria and this was left over from my intersection socks and these aren't a pairing that I'd usually put together however this is my Shunkley's fibre hand spun this is not gonna focus yeah it will um, so this is white face woodland which is a, a breed that I really enjoy I've got some that we had spun from local sheep and I had a, a absolute lovely time spinning this I used my drop spindle which is just here um, and it was a braid I took half of the braid and spun it all in one go actually I did it in two batches because the spindle got so heavy um, but then put them to the side and then I divided the second half into three and then spun those consecutively and then plied it together I'm really happy with the outcome I'm really excited to knit with it and I feel like these colours are a really good pairing um, my thought is that this is the perfect amount to do a Nordiska by Caitlin Hunter and I haven't knitted one of her patterns in ages I kind of stepped away from her and that's just because I've part of it's my you know being so new uh, now I'm a little bit more experienced I guess I've been knitting for three years now in fact I think this is like third year anniversary we'll do a giveaway um, we'll do a giveaway but I've never been totally stoked with the fits of things a few items yes and I really want to knit the Covia I think it's called I can't remember that is on my list and I have some plain white faced woodland and I actually really hoped that eventually I could do a hand spun um, but I want to get a bit more confidence before knitting like spinning an amount for a jumper you know like a, a big amount it would need to be at least 200 grams maybe 300 and I'm still not sure that I will be able to have the patience to do 300 grams on a drop spindle just yet it's learning right um, but anyway, I feel like this would make a really good Nordiska. The colour palette's lovely for it. Um, but I would probably knit it a couple of sizes larger than I am as a gift as opposed to for me. I I don't know, I'm, I'm not necessarily my consistent wheelhouse but then again maybe it will be so maybe I'll do it one or just two sizes larger than I am and then see if it becomes a gift or if I love it is that a good idea or is that a bad idea I really want to knit with this I'm really enjoying looking at it and I feel like these are a really good combination but I don't want to just knit it for the sake of it but the pattern just spoke to me with these together so 
yeah but I'm reluctant to cast on while I still have these on my needles I've got quite a bit but I might like I say I might stop this one in which case if I do I might cast on so yeah that's where I am at a little bit of waffle but I am really excited to knit with the hat spun and that Nordisco you knit down on the colour works at the end of the sleeves and at the end of the body so it would be a while until I got to knit with it anyway so yeah that's fun and I guess I'll just share my last project which is a bit of spinning I am using I'll grab it out of here delicately this gorgeous fluff and this was from Wool and Witch who is the lovely Steph and it is a recycled art bat Steph saves these from landfill basically her I think someone she knew does a needle felting class not the same people but this is just so cute that I wanted to show it again <laughs> um, and yeah so she cards them and makes bats out of them and I just think that's wonderful I'm really enjoying using such a soft fiber it's very 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 different from using the white face woodland it, it I guess it's not my favorite because I know I am quite a rusticy tactile person and not that this isn't tactile this is tactile in a very soft gentle way but seeing the colors feeling it and there's a bit of sparkle in there I'm really enjoying it it's so much fun it's very different for me and yeah I don't I didn't I don't know it's just really fun I'm really enjoying it this was a spindle that was very kindly sent to me thank you so much I I'm, I'm just overwhelmed with gratitude this feels a lot different to this one and what I want to do um we'll talk about it that we'll talk about it and make it up as we go along but basically I'm really enjoying this I'm obviously not hugely far into this but it's spinning quite nice and fine it's I'm aiming for a bit more consistency in this one and I think I'm getting it and yeah lovely lovely fiber different and quite exciting to be using a different fiber um, that's softer and is behaving so differently so just in case my waffle was terrible I want to do two giveaways one for fiber and a drop spindle and another for knitting required knitting required knitting inspired bits maybe some yarn maybe some needles we will see um, but in a nutshell the call to arms the call I don't know the phrase the uh, entry for the giveaway is simply write a beautiful fiber story a fiber or yarn related story making related story in the comments maybe from when you've met someone maybe just some kindness maybe you know bringing conversations on your train journeys on your commutes whatever it is what what has fiber and the fiber community bought for you um make sure that you either say that you would prefer fiber because you would like to try spinning i do say i would say this is for someone that has never tried spinning before and would really like to and then if you prefer some yarn and knitting even crochet and then specify if you're not fast and you would really like to try spinning then don't mention it and I'll I will lucky dip people I will use a random generator to generate a comment in I would say three weeks it gives people time to maybe catch up on this episode and you know think of a lovely story which I'm gonna hopefully if anyone wants to take part enjoy reading um, yeah Thank you, and back to other cat. Yeah, it'll be nice for me to 
give back after a lot of kindness and generosity recently. Yeah, I can't believe how much talking to you has changed my life. I, I've gone into it a little bit and I, I fluctuate, but without this community, I would not be the person I am today. I would, I don't know what I would be doing. Um, a lot more suffering, I would say. So thank you for helping me not to suffer. Um, my body's had more time to heal than I could have hoped for. It's still not there. It's still doing what it's doing and we're still figuring it out. But because of you, I'm not forced into doing things that... Yeah. So thank you. We'll just do that. Um, and yeah, I'm getting to meet real fibre friends in real human 3D, 4D, 5D, whatever D it is. Oh man. Right. I best go and get myself back into <laughs> reality again. So thank you for being here, is all I really need to keep saying. I can't get over how exciting it is. I hope to record a video with Alex talking about all of our little projects. I hope to record a three years of sweater knitting, what I've kept, what I haven't, uh, how things have lasted. Uh, I might do that one next week. It's going to take quite a bit of time and effort, I think, because I've now knitted a lot. So I might wean out and just do a pile of these are getting given away and do a speedy why I'm getting rid of them and then a pile of things that I love or what's lasted really well so that we can talk about those ones a bit more in depth. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. I hope that whatever you get up to in the week brings you some joy. I hope that you take a moment for yourself, even if that's just the moment here with me, which is really damn cool and I'm really grateful to be part of those moments. It always brings me joy when I see people sharing their cosy mornings or evenings. Um, sorry, I'll stop waffling. Don't forget to love each other. Hope to see you soon.
check out this absolutely gorgeous cove, Tintagel in Cornwall. Absolutely beautiful. The water's not too cold. It's a nice amount of waves to play in. <laughs> My cat just reads a book up on the shore. Uh, I can't believe it's like this in September. It feels like the hottest day we've had this year. What a dream. I think I spotted a mermaid.